Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing a full face of your 2021 drugstore favorites. So I asked you guys on Instagram what products were your most used products of 2021, and I got a lot of the same responses, so I added up all the responses and created a full face of makeup with the most common responses. So these are the products that you guys have been loving in 2021, and I can't wait to get started. There's actually a product in here that I never tried in 2021 that I'm really excited to try because I've heard nothing but amazing things. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into it. Overwhelmingly, the number one response for foundation, the most used foundation in 2021, was the L'Oreal Freshwear Infallible. You guys know this is one of my absolute favorite foundations. I'm not surprised that it was the most popular response. I have mine in the shade 485. This is my self-tan foundation because I like using it for events, for times where I'm probably going to be self-tanned because it's some sort of a special occasion. Um, so it is a little bit dark for me, but the concealer will even everything out. This is one of my most commonly recommended foundations when I get brides that message me or anyone looking for a long wear foundation that still looks really fresh and skin-like but provides really good coverage. I feel like it's hard to find that. A lot of the times the long wear foundations are really, really matte or really, really cakey and this one can get that way if you use like way too much product, but if you use just a small amount of product, you can get a really nice natural finish with great coverage, with great staying power. There are a ton of beautiful foundations to come in 2022, but I have a feeling that this one will still be going strong as a favorite foundation at the drugstore or just a favorite foundation in general. All right, next up is concealer. And this was by far the most common response, which was kind of surprising to me because there have been so many concealers this year, but it's the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. So I had this in a darker shade because the way that I liked to use this was on blemishes, like blemishes gross and TMI, but blemishes that were kind of like crusty or scabby. And it would cover up blemishes without highlighting the dryness. So I picked up another color to use underneath my eyes because I haven't really used this much underneath my eyes. This shade is pretty light. This is light ivory. So we'll see if it works. Ooh, that's bright. But the foundation's a little dark, so hopefully everything will even out in the end. And I'm just gonna kind of put it around the places of my face that I would highlight so my under eyes aren't like white and then the rest of my face a different color. This is such a natural coverage. And really great if you have drier under eyes. Much better than the original camo. If you used that and you were like, absolutely no way, I do not like this. I don't see what the hype is about. I feel like that's really similar to Tarte Shape Tape in that way, where it's really good for full coverage and matte makeup, but not necessarily for drier or more mature skin. This concealer is like the drier skin, more mature skin cousin concealer to the other one. And this whole camo line has been so successful, so I'm really excited to test out the powder foundation when it comes out. It's on their website right now, but it shows that it's sold out, but it's actually not sold out. It hasn't gone live yet. It went live on Ulta's website, but only in, I think, 12 shades, and it sold out almost immediately. And then before I go in with powder, I'm going to go in with another cream product. This is the one that I haven't tried that everyone seems to love and was an overwhelming response on Instagram. And it's the Pixie by Petra on the Glow blush. I picked up the shade Ruby. I feel like a lot of people talked about this blush, but I have the Flower Beauty one that's a lot like this. And I just don't love that one. So I kind of wrote this off, but let's see if I like this one any better than the Flower Beauty one. I felt like the Flower Beauty one didn't have a lot of pigment. It kind of wiped off my foundation and it was almost too hydrating and glowy. This is a lot bigger than the Flower Beauty one, which is good because it's kind of expensive. So I'm just gonna put it the tops of my cheeks. It's a really pretty color. A little bit my nose and on this side. It goes on really smoothly and then just use my same foundation brush to blend that in. Really pretty, really, really natural. If you don't like a super intense looking blush. This one is really natural looking, but it has more pigment than the Flower Beauty one, definitely. I'm gonna wanna set this with a powder just because it is so glowy. If you have really dry skin and you don't like setting things with a powder, this would leave, you could totally skip your highlight because this leaves just like a nice glowy finish. So definitely a really good base for a powder blush to make your blush last all day long. So thank you guys for making me pick this up. It's really, really pretty. This color is stunning and just something you could throw in your purse 
to reapply your blush throughout the day. Okay, and then for powder, this is my least surprising answer. It was the number seven Lift and Illuminate powder. This has been a favorite, I think, of everyone's in 2021. It's the Charlotte Tilbury dupe. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's really, can you see how it just totally airbrushed my under eye area? It sets it without it looking crusty. And it actually, I've never paired this with the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer, but that pair is awesome because the hydrating concealer is already really forgiving on the under eye area and then setting it with this powder, it just looks completely flawless. And like I said, you could totally skip this step if you have drier skin, but mine's been getting kind of shiny, so I am gonna go in with my Alme Healthy Hue blush just to set that pixie blush. And this is another really like illuminating blush, so it's not gonna take away from the glowiness that the pixie one gave my skin. All right, loving the complexion so far, but now let's go on to brows. And the number one response, which was kind of surprising to me because there were a lot of brow product releases, was the NYX, the classic NYX professional brow pencil. This never gets old. I feel like no matter what brow products are released at the drugstore or in general, this will remain just a timeless classic. I love this shade, this is taupe. This was actually one of the first brow pencils I ever used. This one and that, like the thick $1 e.l.f. one were kind of how I learned to fill in my brows, which I didn't do for a really long time until I started watching YouTube videos after college. I didn't fill in my brows or anything like that in college. And this shade was just a really good shade to start with because it's so forgiving. You can use this on blondes, on brunettes, and especially if you're a brunette, if you're new to filling in your brows, I highly recommend this shade, the shade Taupe. Because it's not like a deep, deep brown where it's going to be really obvious. You can be messy, you can be not perfect, and it's going to fill them in. But it's going to hide any kind of mistakes that you may make. This wasn't a response, but I'm going to go in with my Milani brow gel just to set these. This stuff lasts all day long. And then for eyeshadow, the number one response was, again, by far, the e.l.f. Bite Size Palette. This is also definitely one of my most used palettes of 2021, just Bite Size Palettes in general. This one is newer to me, but it's become my absolute favorite. This is the I Love You A Latte. This is their new all matte one. I just have been really, really loving simple matte eyeshadow looks for every day. So I think I'm gonna go in with this kind of warmer one all over the lid. Like I said when I first tried this, I love this eyeshadow palette because you guys know I'm all about a cohesive palette. Whenever I get new palettes, if they don't have a transition color, a brightening color, and a deepening color, I'm like, Ugh, this is not a cohesive palette. You know, you're gonna have to dip into other palettes to make a complete look. This has all three of those things, deepening color, transition, and brightening. So if you get a palette that you really love that doesn't have everything you need, just pair it with this one and you've got all your bases covered. Or like what I'm doing right now, just use this on its own. I'm just gonna put some under my eye and then add a little bit of this deeper brown just over on the outer corner for some dimension. And then I'm just gonna take a clean blending brush and blend out those edges. I didn't get like any eyeliner recommendations, so I'm just gonna go in with my Flower Beauty Forever liquid liner and then go in with by far the most common mascara response. And then the most common by far mascara response was the Maybelline Sky High Mascara. This was a viral mascara. It was all over TikTok, everywhere. It really does a great job at lengthening. For me personally, it's not my absolute favorite mascara because I like something that's really, really volumizing and curling because those are my problems. My main problem is that my lashes are really straight. So I want something that's gonna lift them and this is a little bit more of a wetter formula, so it's not gonna do so much lifting as it is going to do lengthening. So if that's kind of what you look for out of a mascara is lengthening, like maybe you already have really curly lashes and you don't want any more curl, you just want a lot of length, I feel like that's where this one shines. So it's definitely a really good mascara. It just depends on what you look for out of a mascara. And then last but not least is lips. I have to agree with this choice. This is another super common response and it's the Maybelline Lifter Gloss with Hyaluronic Acid. I have mine in the shade Silk, and it's definitely one of my favorite lip glosses of all time. Hydrating, it's long lasting, it's not sticky, and it's super pigmented. I love this color too. 
And that is everything. Those were my by far most common responses when I asked you guys your most used makeup of 2021. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Maybe you agreed with some, maybe you didn't. Let me know in the comments below if there's something that was not in this video that you're like, what? I cannot believe this wasn't the most common response. Thank you guys so much for watching, for your participation in this, for your support over the last year and get ready because 2022 has a lot of amazing content coming your way and I'm just so grateful for each and every one of you. So give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next one.